Apple just announced iOS 16, which is currently in developer beta, should be hitting public beta and then later on release in about September alongside the new iPhone 14s. So today, let's take a quick look at the top new features iOS 16 brings with it. Hey guys, Ash here from C4 Retech and let's get started. The lock screen, it's now way more customizable. You can tap and hold to customize it. Here you can create different lock screen presets that you get to switch between. For example, you can have one for while you're at work and one for when you're home. So why do you need different sets of lock screens? Well, that's cause of all the customization Apple has on offer now. You can have a certain set of widgets that are say useful for work and then set up another wallpaper set with a more personalized image and relevant widgets for when you aren't on the clock. Like a lot of Android manufacturers do, Apple now offers their own curated wallpaper collection and iOS is supposed to be intelligent enough to pick the best images from the ones you shot, ones that could be used as wallpapers and present them to you. Here, Apple's advanced portrait mode gets some use. Like in this image, you see how the clock widget is behind my head here you can use two fingers to move the image around to align things just right. Now if you want to customize more, you can simply swipe to check out some quick filters for the image. Say you like this filter, but not the font for the clock. That can be changed too. Tap the clock, try out the typeface options available, choose the one you like, and additionally you can also play around with the colors and done. Now let's say you don't want the depth effect here. That's simple too. Tap the three dots, disable the depth effect, and you have your regular widgets on top of wallpaper setup. You can create multiple such lock screen setups and swap between them by just long pressing and swiping. Sweet, right? Now we've all had to deal with apps that tend to send out way too many notifications, right? To help declutter it, all the notifications now roll in at the bottom of the lock screen as and when you receive them. Sometimes, especially while you're following sports, you tend to get multiple notifications about progress. To help declutter this, Apple is offering live API. With this, there would be one notification that updates live with say score changes. It would even work in other situations, like say when you track an Uber ride arriving. All this quite neatly ties into Apple's Focus, which we first saw on iOS 15. Focus basically lets you set up modes or focuses for you to limit who and what you can get notifications from and you could control it from the control center. Now here, this ties into the wallpaper presets that we set up. For example, this is my personal focus. I've got my face on the lock screen, I see the widgets I wanna see, and I unlock into this page. Now, for work mode, I just long press, switch, and boom, I control what apps I get notifications from and even what's on my home screen. And you don't even have to switch between these manually. You can have it automatically change based on location or time. Say you can have something, you can have a scenario where you travel to work and based on that location info, your lock screen and home screen changes. And maybe you don't get sports notifications. And then you get back home, once again, everything changes to make sure you have a more at-home experience with your iPhone. Next up, with messages, you finally get to edit them after you hit send. Helps in case you made any stupid typos or there are autocorrect issues. Additionally, you can undo sent messages, say in case you accidentally sent it to the wrong contact. And finally, when you read a message and you don't have the time to reply, you can go back and mark it as unread. Yes, iOS finally gets this feature. For a while now, we've been able to use SharePlay to watch TV together or listen to music together from FaceTime. Apple's now brought SharePlay to messages. Say you're watching a movie, you can instantly get SharePlay going via messages. You'd have shared playback controls and continue to message the person you're watching the movie with. Talking about messages, speech to text or dictation gets an update too. When you dictate something, the keyboard remains open so you can seamlessly switch back and forth between voice and touch. It's also more intelligent and can add punctuation and even emojis based on the text. Most importantly, all of this happens on your own device and not on the cloud for privacy reasons. Live text is another feature that's been around for a while. Live text is basically being able to pull text data from images. With iOS 16, Apple's bringing it to video. So at any point, you can copy text that you're seeing on a video. Sweet, right? But that's not all. Live text can also do more. For example, you see an image with currency that you need converted, done. You see text you need translated, done. Beat it up, the Translate app itself now gets a new camera view. Google's had this for quite a while. I'm glad to see Apple catch up. With iOS 15, we got Visual Lookup, where images were analyzed to give you more information on what's actually on screen. With iOS 16, Apple goes a step further with this, letting you cut out the subject from the image and place them directly onto other apps like Messages. 
Apple also seems to be working hard to replace actual physical wallets. At this point, this is pretty much a USA thing, where in certain states, you can use your government ID for in-app verification. Similarly, keys to your home, car, hotel, etc., can be kept in the wallet and even be shared via messages, mail, or WhatsApp. With Apple Pay, Apple is adding an option for merchants to be able to accept contactless payments right from an iPhone itself without the need for extra hardware like dedicated payment terminals. The next one, now this is one I wish Apple brings to other markets, Apple Pay Later. Think of it like EMI, but you pay every two weeks. Pay for something with Apple Pay Later, Apple pays the retailer, you pay Apple in four installments spread over six weeks with zero interest and zero fees. Now the next feature is more global, but it's still pretty limited. Apple's new Maps is currently available in 10 regions. Later this year, they're gonna be bringing it to 11 more. With their new city detail, Maps render in Suite 3D with more detail than ever. This is for select cities only though. What is available for most people is multi-stop routes with as many as 15 stops. You can set this up on a Mac and then use it on your iPhone. Next up, with parental controls, that's gotten better too. iOS 16 makes it easier than ever to monitor your kids' screen times and approve their purchases. There's an easier way to set up parental controls to keep things age appropriate. And also applying parental controls to a new device it's as simple as bringing your iPhone close to the device being set up. To improve user experience, Apple now lets you do things like, say, provide extra screen time for your child right from the Messages app. Continuing with this family trend, we have iCloud Shared Photo Library. Now say you're on vacation with your family. Different people might take images at different points of time during the vacation. Well, some we'd share with some people. It's very unlikely that everyone will have all the pictures that they want. That is what Apple is trying to change here with iCloud shared photo library. So now you can have one shared library that you can share with up to five other people. You can choose what to share. You could choose say everything in your library or choose to share images based on the start date or based on people in the photos or maybe just share images where you're together. Once this is set up, if you wanna share other things, you can manually move more images on over if you want to. Or you can just turn on shared library, the option in the camera itself, so that images shot directly go on over to the shared library as and when they are taken. Well, it's really cool. The accidents that could happen, now that's scary. Speaking of scary, there is safety check. If you're in an unfortunate situation and wanna quickly sign out of all your devices, retaining access only to the, uh, to the iPhone that you have on hand, it lets you do just that. Additionally, it also lets you revoke location access that you might have shared with someone earlier. So yep, Apple has you covered for breakups. And that, oh yeah, one extra bit that I came across after I actually wrote this script is that finally, you know, iOS 16 brings support for Nintendo Switch Joy-Cons. Controller support has always been a little iffy with Apple products. Yes, you can get controllers for them, but those need to be MFI. They need to be MFI certified. So there's a little bit extra that the manufacturer has to pay, which drives up the cost of the controllers. Whereas with Android, you could just buy in literally any controller that supports Bluetooth and pair it with your Android device. Now. Apple did make some exceptions for MFI. So far, you could pair Xbox controllers and Sony PlayStation controllers without uh, them actually being certified MFI. Now, adding to that list, Nintendo Joy-Cons, Nintendo uh, Switch controllers, they can also be paired with iOS devices. So anyways, that's iOS in a nutshell. Which of these features has you excited the most? What do you think of iOS 16? Leave a comment down below. Also, while you're down there, thumbs up, thumbs down based on whatever you felt about the video. Subscribe, turn on notifications, hit that bell icon if you haven't yet. And thanks a lot for your time. Thanks for watching. Until next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech. And I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.